Okay, Yen, what's up? Walked in on the end or something. Always did know how to win, friends. I was provoked. Mm -hmm. Saw it happen. Wanted to talk to me about something? Amos Far Ipsis, a specialist on jinns. Heard of him? I found a tome he'd penned in the Emperor's library. Far Ipsis set off for Skellige one day and was never heard from again. I asked some of the local folk. Some here still remember him. They know what happened to him? The locals say they last saw his ship off the coast of Hindisfjall. Then a once in an eon storm broke. So he's probably fish food by now. Not necessarily. I must learn what became of him. Why? Do you know him? No. It's not the mage who interests me. It's his gin. You sure this mage actually had a gin? His books strongly suggest he did. He describes taming one, harnessing energy from its power. Storm wouldn't pose a threat if he'd had a djinn. He could just utter a wish. Perhaps he had none left, or something unexpected happened. Why are you even interested? Djinns are dangerous sometimes, and malicious all the time. I remember. But the advantages outweigh the risks. If I can tame a djinn, I shall gain incredible power. And that could be useful to us one of these days. All right, so what exactly do you expect me to do? You must help me find this gin. I've no gold to offer in reward, but I shall be ever so grateful. Since you put it that way, fine, I'll help you. Thank you. A boat awaits in the harbor. Come. The picture emitted a puff of glowing red smoke. The smoke pulsated, then gathered into an irregular sphere floating in front of the poet's hand. A jinn is a powerful air spirit, a condensation of the power of said element endowed with consciousness and character. The latter usually nasty. According to legend, jinns can grant even the most far-fetched wishes, though they do so begrudgingly. Unusually powerful mages can capture and tame these beings. A mage who succeeds in doing so can then draw energy from such a spirit, using it to cast spells without having to summon the power from traditional sources. Only a handful have ever managed this feat, however, for jinns fight to avoid such a fate with stubborn determination. To imprison a jinn and bend it to one's will, one must first weaken it and that is no easy task. Fighting jinns is extraordinarily difficult. They can fling off spells in an instant that the most accomplished human mages could never master with the years of preparation. What's more, by manipulating the element of air they can summon gales, powerful storms, even hurricanes. Luckily, as magic beings they are vulnerable to silver, yet steel will do them no harm. Monsters most commonly claim innocence as their victims. Tardy merchants, reckless children, and travelers who wander into dark woodlands out of misplaced curiosity. None of the above near fear Himes, however. These wraiths only latch onto particularly despicable, in despicable individuals who have committed some unspeakable crime. To all others, they remain completely invisible. When they do show themselves to the one they torment, they appear as a tall, shadow-clad, humanoid silhouette with long, sharp claws. Yep. I guess not. The devil by the way. Then you're the wood. Moon yeah. dust, spectral oil, and igni. Sorry, we never had a fight. To fight it. Yeah, we never fought it. I thought you were like, you know what? 
Siri encountered plenty of liars, scoundrels, and villains along her path, but luckily happened on some decent folk as well. Certainly worthy of being counted among the latter was Skjall, a young warrior from Lofoten. Initially, he and his family tended to Siri's wounds, nursed her back to health, then he helped her flee the wild hunt. In doing so, he sacrificed the thing Skelligers hold dearest, his honor. Accused of cowardice, he was forced to perform a heroic deed to clear his name. Sadly, he failed. Mortally wounded by a beast in an abandoned garden, he suffered a slow, painful, and lonely death. Ouch. When Geralt encountered a misshapen midget at the Bloody Baron's court, he didn't think much of it. Yet when he heard a similarly deformed being had washed up on Skellige's shores in the same boat in which Ciri and her mysterious companion had sailed off shortly prior, he connected the two at once. It was clear this rough-hewn hunk of flesh was the key to finding Cirilla. See, you've managed to prepare everything already. I have. How could you possibly know I'd agree? I didn't. Decided to risk it. Just once, you might try to take the initiative. Would you even let me? It would depend on the situation. That's a nice boat. Something I've always wondered. What do you witchers do once there are no basilisks lashing out of a giant around your mind? No, that's a decoration. The ship carrying the djinn sank somewhere in this area. Not too precise as leads go. I'll cast a spell on our boat. We'll know if there are any wrecks on the seafloor below us. All right, let's get to work. Mind if I take the helm? <sighs> I got a choice. No. You can't save the game. Yes, I can. I just had to wait three seconds. Okay, fine. Let's go. Do the Not sure this gin thing's a good idea. We managed to seize one before. Do you remember? Of course. Dandelion almost lost his voice that time. <laughs> How lucky your exorcism saved it. It was poetic. Yeah, how was I supposed to know that incantation meant be gone and plow yourself? You should have studied foreign languages. Gonna keep bringing that up for the rest of my life? Of course. Your last wish effectively assured it. My wish was about us being together always, not about you mocking my every mistake. Careful what you wish for. And when your wish is granted, you must accept it with all attendant circumstances. Yeah. And as for your missteps, I don't rightly see why I shouldn't laugh if they're amusing. There's something here, on the bottom. It's too deep here. You can't dive that long. You underestimate me. On the contrary. After all, I asked you for help. I'll cast a spell. It will slow your heart for a time. You can stay submerged longer. Asad I cried a rivon. Ready. Careful down there. I How's it going? Yeah, and you know I hate it when you read my mind. Strictly speaking, I'm not reading your mind, but using telepathy. Besides, you've nothing to hide, right? You wouldn't admit it if I did. The point. See anything interesting? A shipwreck in the cavern. I'll look inside. Just 
the snapped masts, busted planks, and the whole swarm of drowners, probably drawn by the corpses of drowned crew, then made their nest here. There's also a clan drummond figurehead. Not the right ship. Come back up. Hey, whoa, whoa, whoa. I got a nice cave in here, buddy. Good point, yeah. Let me enjoy it. Got some resin. Dude, you know how much resin is worth? I don't time. <laughs> Take us. Something's here. Another wreck. Let's see if our gin's down there. Careful. Look for something that might indicate it's the Mage's ship. Got something. A Skelliger's buckler. Clan Haymai symbols. Donar's clan. Donar was a babe in swaddling clothes when this buckler landed here. What do you have? A warhorn, bearing Clan Haymai symbols. Longship belonged to Clan Dimon. Yen, doubt any of these boats were the mages. These are old sunken longships. Come back then. We must search elsewhere. You're getting better at this. Go even quicker if you help me down there. I prefer to observe matters from up here, most definitely. Yeah, like when we were looking for the golden dragon and the avalanche swept us off the trail. Me clinging to the remains of a bridge for dear life. You gripping my waist, admiring the view. Remember, the chasm below us was breathtaking. Rustling trees, a lazily flowing stream. I remember, though I found myself admiring what I had right in front of me. following something strange about those rocks and there's something on the bottom we'll see what it is
we got? See something? Something doesn't do it justice. A huge crater, as if a meteorite landed here. I must see it. Diving in after all? No, I shall cast another spell to see through your eyes. Now relax. I see Falchia Badem Ein Eichter Illivaid. That is no meteorite crater. What is it then? The effect of teleportation. A powerful force cut out a fragment of the seabed, rocks, and everything lying within the teleportation zone. Always claimed portals were dangerous. I believe we're on the right track. Look for anything that might contain a gin. Fine, but get out of my eyes. Too cramped in here for us both. I see Falchia Badem Ein Eichter Illivaid. Silver. Bruin crested cutlery. Ship belonged to someone awfully wealthy. Amos was no pauper. It could very well be his ship. in here but there's something you ought to like what half a seal that'll do come back up but i want to keep exploring transverse cut through the pelvis surgical precision no conventional weapon can do this This basket exactly in half. Bet it was cut by the same thing that cut the skeleton. Teleportation. Well, when things don't go through the teleportation correctly, they not okay. I had to Only found half. Can you do anything with this? I can use it to locate the other half, to within a dozen yards. And once we find that, we should find the gin. Exactly. Ready? I'll take us there on the count of three. Oh, no, not another portal. Stop whining. One, two... search the area. Yen, not so fast. Gotta tell me what this is about first. Why do you want this djinn? But you already know. A djinn's power is priceless to a mage. That I know, but I also want to know how you plan to use it. Wouldn't go to these lengths if it wasn't something important. You're right. It's important. Even very important. <sighs> How long has this been going on, Geralt? This thing between us? Fifteen, twenty years? We repeatedly split up, then return to one another. Something draws us to each other, but I can never be certain if it's a true feeling or merely a bit of mischief by a djinn. So that's it? This is about my last wish? You asked that djinn to bind us together forever. I want to ask this one to take that wish back. Why would you want to do that? To see what it's like without it. 
to see if we'll still matter to one another, or if we'll be like two strangers. Hmm. Wondered that myself many times. You see? We're just a step away from learning the truth. Come, let's search the ship. Seems Amos was quite the eccentric, asking the Jinn to lift half his ship to a mountaintop. He didn't necessarily. Jinns are inherently mischievous. This one might have granted his wish and perverted it in doing so. In that case, I'd appreciate it if you didn't wish I'd disappear from your life. I've yet to decide how to word it. We should explore the ship. Nothing here. What do you mean? There's a jug and a bunch of cards. Grant cards? Pick Nothing interesting. Pick up the grant cards. Pick up the grant cards. Care of the Vivia. Your destiny calls. I just want to see where exactly. We're on the very top of a mountain. We glitching off the edge of that boat. If I fall, there might not be any way back up. Interesting. Mystery of mysteries, Agnes of Glanville. Among the many creatures of our world, there are but two that are able to draw and absorb the power, and these are cats and dragons. <clears throat> Both species instinctively sense the presence of magic intersections and are, and often choose them as resting places, which is strange, for other animals avoid these same spots. Numerous theories attempt to explain this behavior, but none do so with thorough success. Some scholars claim dragons use the power they imbibe to fly, for as the natural philosophers have proven, no creature of their size and mass should be capable of lifting itself into the air using such meager wings. As for cats, there is a theory stating the power is behind their gift for seeing, for seeing things in complete darkness. Others claim this ability is theirs by nature, and they use the power of the intersections for other unknown purposes. Indeed, that all members of the Philidae genus are able to see beings from other planes, invisible persons, and emanations of the power have been proven have been proven beyond any doubt of nu on numerous occasions. Empires by Gian Battista. None of the four planes or dimensions, those of fire, water, earth, and air, is accessible to mere mortals. They are inhabited, however, by creatures known as genies. There are four types, each corresponding to one of the four elements which come from their respective essences. Each type of genie also counts its antithesis among the others. Thus, the married. The Myrides, aligned with the element of water, are opposed to the fiery Ifrits. The plane of earth is inhabited by the Dao genies, and the dimension of air which opposes it is home for Jin, Jini, whose name, incidentally, is the root of the word genie. 
This last term is often used by simple folk to refer to all creatures that inhabit the elemental planes, which is an obvious blunder. Unusually powerful sorcerers can sometimes bind such beings and bend them to their will, thus acquiring tremendous might to the point of mere omnipotence. For a genie, being the living personification of an element's energies is akin to an almost boundless reservoir of the power. Thus, its master can draw energy from the genie for spellcasting without the tiresome need to channel from traditional sources. However, those who are able to bind a genie are few and far between, for the strength of the inhabitants of the four planes is matched only by the cunning which they employ to avoid such a fate. Mage must have slept here. Nothing here. Hmm, nothing interesting here. Yo, this is all in here. This is very interesting. Nice shoes. Looks like the impact with the mountain was so powerful it popped the wearer right out of them. Wonder what this means. It's a, it's a job. Blood. Someone was dragged across the deck. War left this mark when the ship suddenly tipped to one side. Blood. Someone was dragged across the deck. War left this mark when the ship suddenly tipped to one side. Yen, I think you should see this. What do you have? It's Amos. Looks exactly like the etching in the book. Except his head was intact there. Think the djinn did this to him? No, it wouldn't attack its master. This looks rather like an unfortunate accident. When the storm broke, Amos must have uttered a wish like, take us away anywhere, to a mountaintop even. And the djinn granted the wish literally. They had a hard landing. Amos was thrown off his feet and against the wall. The bookcase did the rest. Always knew too much studying could kill you. If he died while being teleported, Seal might still be on him. Behold. Bravo! Come to the deck. I've an idea. Cold's preserved the corpse. Hmm. Died from head trauma. Bookcase cracked his skull. Must have been a hard landing atop this mountain. Hmm, <laughs> there's something strange about this pottery. Don't know what, Geralt, it's just a water jug. Are you sure? I don't like this boat. Don't do this. It's bad. Don't do it on the boat. Step back a bit. What are you going to do? Summon and tame the djinn. It's not likely to be happy. Stand at the ready. Tame djinn. Rif kaishta en daya. Kaishta et displaya. Gidvered me castle.
Only a djinn can remove another djinn's spell. Remove this one and you'll be free. Storm's over. Yes. It's all over. Maybe we should sit. You look a bit dazed. I'm not, but we can sit. Feel any better? I told you, I'm fine. Don't need to play tough for me. That was a hard fight. Maybe not as hard as the last time we tamed a djinn, but still. <laughs> no comparison, I'm afraid. Half of Rhine suffered then. Now I'm merely a bit tired. Thank you for coming, Geralt. I'd have had a much harder time of it on my own. Well, never could say no to you. Hmm. Perhaps that will change now. Feel anything? That anything's... different? Hmm. I expected... I don't know what I expected, actually. A bit of vertigo, perhaps. I thought... you'd become a stranger to me. That I'd look at you and not feel a thing. But it's not like that at all. Nothing's changed. Jin might have cheated us after all. Why? Because I don't feel that anything's changed either. I love you, Yen. And I love you. Was that? It can't be all sweetness and light. Strange. Done that so many times. But it felt like our first kiss to me. It was in a way. Besides, once you say I love you, a kiss has to taste differently. What's next? Got any plans? That depends what you mean. We must find Siri and then defeat the hunt. But I doubt the world will end if we sit here a while. <sighs> My, it's lovely. Mm -hmm. Think the spirits of Skellige favor us. So yeah, we want the Yennefer romance. Which I think most people consider is the canon one. So where are you gonna pop us down to? No, you just stand on Next time we go on horseback. A horse would never make it down that mountain. What now? Well, I'm due to appear in Vizima. We must report to the Emperor after all. Ciri's our concern, and only ours. At heart, perhaps. But it's not what we agreed with Amir. We must see him. Awfully loyal to your patron. He happens to be your patron as well, darling. Do well to remember that, otherwise he might feel compelled to remind you. If we 
gotta, we gotta. We wouldn't have known Siri had returned if not for the Emperor and his agents. It's the least we can do. Yen, what happened back there? It was very nice. Let's not ruin it by hashing out the details. I'm going to see the Baron. Collect Uma from him, then we'll ride for Kaer Morin. I shall join you as quickly as I can. See you, Yen. Take care of yourself. Two points. Come on, Yen. Geralt. Ever think about the past? About your time with the hunt? At times, I'm amazed we survived. Eridan's not usually one to leave witnesses behind. That's just it. He didn't. Lost my memory when I escaped the hunt. Ah, yes. Your famous amnesia. You didn't have it? For a short time only. Once the Emperor's mages got their hands on me, my memory quickly returned. When the hunt had you, hope they didn't hurt you. Even if they did, I've no memory of it. The whole time's but a string of phantom images. Blood and fire. A wild chase through different worlds. All shrouded in fog. Though I do remember you coming for me. Trading your life for mine. I hadn't the chance to thank you then. You'd have done the same for me. I'm touched by your certainty. But you've yet to tell me how you escaped them. Wouldn't mind knowing that myself. There are times I remember rushing forward, red riders around me. Next thing I know, I'm in the woods at the foot of Kaer Morin. That's it. What did Aridin want from you exactly? The same thing he wanted from you. You don't recall? Draw a blank on most of my time with them. We were bait, Geralt. Both of us. Eridan believed Ciri would come for us sooner or later, and he would capture her. Fortunately, she didn't fall for it. How do you go from being the Emperor's hostage to being his ally? One day, the door of my cell opened, and instead of seeing the usual officer, I saw Emir. He promised to release me and grant me free reign of the Imperial Treasury, provided I did what he asked. He told you about Ciri, and you accepted his offer. Why? Shared aims make for strange bedfellows. I knew I had to find Ciri before Eridan did, and if any man had the power and the means to help me, it was the Emperor. Besides, once all said and done, he is her father. Why didn't you look for me, after you'd recovered your memory and your freedom? I assumed you would recover quickly and find me first. You had mages to help you. I was on my own. Well, not entirely. Besides, I knew you'd fled the hunt. Eridan would never have let you go. He'd erased my memory, but you escaped. It was wholly possible he hadn't had the chance with you. And there were your Witcher mutations. I expected they'd stave off any serious injury. Still can't get something out of my mind. What? So, feel any different after our encounter with the Jinn? Yes. Now I feel... regret. Mean to say that... That I regret we didn't try that earlier. Much earlier. Think we would have argued less? Quite the opposite. But the other moments would have been more intense as well. Moments like this. Found something that might belong to you. That skull some sort of accessory? If so, you've changed your style a bit. It's a weapon. Don't remember ever seeing you with that? It's as you said. I've changed my style. I've had that skull since the near the beginning of the game, back in Velen. No, White Orchard. White Orchard? Yes, I've released... Yeah. Me? What's the skull? 
Where'd it from? Uh, it's from the opening cutscene. Um, uh, when she was being pursued by, well, there was like you know a battle going on between I think Nilfgaard and the Northern Realms or whatever, yeah. and people were pursuing her, so she used a bunch of magic to escape, and that that's ba and it shows like Geralt and Vesemir you following the tracks, which basically eventually lead them to White Orchard. Okay. Thanks, Yen. See you later. Go see Uma. But we also have all this stuff too. You know what? Let's go do some Gwent. Yes, I do. First, though, since we'll be going, we need to switch out our clothes. your language, mister. His long search for Siri led Geralt to conclude that Uma, the ugliest man alive and the victim of a curse, was the key to finding the young woman. 